Hi again, everyone. We are going to start the talk now, and I just wanted to remind all of you to please post any questions or queries you may have either in the Q and A section or in the chat window. Also, you can minimize the chat panel if you want to enlarge the screen, as sometimes the video or the screen doesn't show uh, in expanded way. With this. We'll start about in a minute. Credible APIs with drop. So the agenda today, we will start off by explaining the use case or the example that I'm using in this talk. Then I'll show the application, example of an application as it's called with RES, uh, JSRS. That will describe the problem of over and under application. And then we will convert that application to a RAVQL application to show how RAVQL solves this problem. And then we'll delve a little bit more into RAVQL. Okay. okay, so, so the use case. case. So, so we're going to build, build this gamification type application, type application uh, with a score application or a rewarding type, type application. So, so think of, of frequently flying miles or something like that, that where you get, get points for doing certain things. things. So, so, so we have, have a personal, personal objective, which is just a member of this program, program this module for gamification program. 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 Um, and, and that's, that's quite a big object, and it contains quite a lot of information, information about, about that person. And then, and then the person has a score. And then, and then you will obviously, obviously want to view, have some, some view, view on this, this from, from a web page, web page or, or cell phone or tablet or something. So let's start off with showing you the REST application as it's built already. Um, a high level design is something like this where we have um, a person service which stores the person data in a database and it exposes the data with the rest api person rest api and it and we have a score service that stores the score in a flat file and it exposes it with a score rest api and then we have the model that model a person and a score and everything that goes with it okay so <clears throat> The application is already running on my machine. Let's look at the REST API. So you will see this is a normal um, API that exposes this on slash person. It injects the backend service, which is the one fronting the database. And then we expose two operations on here, one that gets all the people back in one call and one that gets a person back by IV. Fairly basic. So if we look at that, so this runs Caucus. So in Caucus, we have a Q dev console that shows the dev console. And here you'll see you have a link to your Swagger UI. And this was just a nice way to test out our REST APIs. So first of all, we can do a get all or get all the people. And you can see that we've got all the data back, but it is quite a lot of data. And if I'm only interested in the name and the surname, this is a lot of data that I bring back over the wire just to be filtered out. I can also do a person by ID. But again, you can see that it brings back the whole person object, um, which is quite a lot. Right. So that's overfetching it's fetching too much data and i only want specific fields in here and then somewhere in this set is a number which is the score id number which i can now use to fetch the score because that call didn't include the score so now i can get the score back right so if we go back to here, 
The problem that we have is overfetching and underfetching, where the overfetching is fetching way too much data that I don't want. And underfetching is that I couldn't get all the data in one call and I had to make a subsequent call to get more data. And then the worst part is the combination of the two, like I've shown here, where both calls fetch too much data, but I had to do two calls to get everything that I want. So let's look at GraphQL and see how GraphQL can solve this for us. Before we do that, a quick history of GraphQL. Um, Facebook developed it initially and then open sourced it. It's now hosted under the Linux Foundation as a specification. It's been positioned as an alternative to REST, even though you can use them together. It does declar declarative data fetching, and Facebook specifically started doing this when they saw an increase of mobile usage. So suddenly, the APIs that typically served the web now also serves mobile applications or websites, and the real estate on a mobile phone is obviously much less than a website, so they want less data. Um, they've been doing it since 2012 and publicly since 2015, so this is not new anymore. So if we go back to our high-level design, we're going to change and we're going to replace the two REST APIs with a GraphQL API. And that's it. We'll keep the model the same and the backend services the same. Okay, so let's get into that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this REST API and paste it here and I'll call it person GraphQL API. Okay, let me make it bigger. So we now want to tell this is a GraphQL API. So all of this is either OpenAPI or JAXRS. So I'll replace this with GraphQL API. I'm still going to inject the backend service because that's where I get the data from. This I'm going to replace with at query because in GraphQL, when I fetch data, it's called a query. I can also give it a description. Um, I don't have to. This is for the schema. And, um, and similarly here, I'll, I'll make this a query. And that's it. So I've converted that API, the person API, to a GraphQL API. So let's quickly look at what does that give us. So if we go back here, you'll see that we also have a GraphQL UI, which is very similar to Swagger UI. It's just the UI that allows you to test your endpoints. So the first thing that I want to show you is that it comes with a query, uh, with a um, schema built in where with JAXRS, you have to add something like OpenAPI to get a schema. And the schema, you can traverse and, and look at all the fields and what's available. And because it has a schema, I can also now, I also now have code inside. So I can do the same query as what we've done with REST. So let's call all the people. But the difference now is I can tell it, I'm only interested in the names and the surname. And now my, you can see that my payload is much smaller. So um, that already solved the overfetching problem. Similarly, I can do person, and I can say with the ID one, get me back that person. And again, solving the overfetching problem. So what we want to do next is see how we can solve the underfetching problem. So what I want is I want to have a scores field on here, um, which I don't have at the moment. So to do that, um, I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to copy the scores service from the REST API and paste it in here. Okay, and then I'm going to modify this that used to be a REST endpoint. And the difference now is I'm not going to make it a query. What I'll do is I'll say that I want to add a field called scores onto person. Um, so here we'll make it a source field. And we'll say when 
the return type as a person, then add this field to it, and here we can say get ID number. So now if I refresh this, the new schema should contain a field called scores, which I can now traverse deeper into the graph. So I can say, yeah, I want the name and the value back. Now I get back the person details that I want, and I also get back the score, everything in one call. So I've solved the overfetching and underfetching problem because I can make one call and get back exactly what I want. And similarly, um, let's show this quickly. Um, right, so clear the log file. We can close this one. So similarly, uh, if I do people, um, it will also return all the scores for that for all the people. The problem when you do return a collection like this one is that the way in which this works is that we make a call to this method, and then we see that you also want this, so we make a call to this. But now if this is a collection, like here, and there's 10 people, we will make 10 method calls to this, which is not necessarily efficient. So what you can do is you can actually say, let's batch this up, and we will pass in a list of persons or people. And now um, this should be people. And now I can do something like this, where I get all the IDs as a collection from the people. And then I'll make them into a list of IDs, and then I can pass the IDs to the backend service. So already, this is the previous call. You can see in the log file, get all people, and then every time that, that there's a, I find a person, I make a call. And now, if I redo this, you can see that I'm getting all the people and then I make one call to the score service passing in all the IDs. So it's a bit more efficient. And that's called batching in GraphQL. The other thing that I can do is um, I can actually do multiple requests. So if we go back to person here and we say, um, and we spell this correctly, and we say ID equals one right so that will get me person one but what i can do now is i can say person one so i name this query and then let's say i also want person two back but for person two i only want the name and the surname i don't care for the score so now i can do person two and id two and now I get that back. So I can combine multiple queries into, into one, like in this example. And the return type doesn't have to be the same. So in my example now, I returned person in both queries. But let's say, and like I said, this is an application that does, let's say, frequent flyer miles. And as an added benefit, we will show you the exchange rate for the place that you are flying to. Right, so... We already have this exchange rate service. So all that we're going to do now is we're going to um, add exchange rate here. And, um, and then we'll add another source field similar to scores, but for exchange rate. And now here you can see an example of where we not only pass in the source field, but other queryable parameters that can be passed in. Right, so now, now I can change this to be person one, and I also want to add the exchange rate. Oh, I must refresh. So now exchange rate will be here, and now I need to say against um, so we traveling, let's say, to the UK. So we want, yeah, we want pound, and we let's say we only want the right back. And now, what we also want to do is we want to say that the weather in London, where you're traveling to, will be whatever something. 
So let's add a weather API. And <clears throat> this is a brand new API. It's not a source field onto person. It's just a new GraphQL API that returns the weather. Okay, so uh, let's refresh here. So rather than a person, we can now remove this. And here we can say we want back, yeah, we can remove this and say we want the weather for um, London. And we want the minimum and the maximum and the description back. Okay, so now, I've gotten the exact data that I want again in one call. I've got the person, the score, the exchange rate, and the weather. And these are all different types that I'm returning. And I can combine as many um, queries into one, I'm basically exactly saying what I need to display my page. Um, next, I want to show... Um, asynchronous so at the moment what happens here is that person gets called and once i get the person back we have enough information to call exchange rate and then i get the full person back and then i only call weather but there's no reason that person and weather needs to be sequential they can be concurrent so what you can do is you can do something like this um, so let's remove, well, let's just add that one, get weather, remove it here. And we now make it a completion stage. Right, and then the same with, um, with person. So here, when we say get person, we will say we want a person back at a completion stage. And for now, we'll just do return that and completion stage. Right, so now I should be able to call um, person and weather at the same time. Now, if you look at the previous call, you'll see that we, we called person and then we got the exchange rate and only then we called the weather for London and got that weather back. Where now we can actually say, call the person, get the weather, then the exchange and then got the weather. So I actually called weather and person at the same time. Now, similarly, I can, let's say I'm traveling to the UK and then to the US. So it's a multi-city. Then I can do something like this. So now this will be USD that I want back. I now have to name it because it's more than one. So we'll say this is the UK. And this is the US. <clears throat> and then I want the weather back for London. And I also want the weather back for New York. Because that's where I'm going. Um, um, <clears throat> so now I can get person and both of these weathers concurrently. But I also want to get these two concurrently because once I have person, there's no reason that this exchange rate should wait for, you know, for, or this one should wait for that one. So to do that, we can just change exchange rate to also be a completion stage. Um, and here I should be able to do that. Okay. And if we now look at the log file, you will see that we, you know, we get everything concurrently. We're getting the weather, the weather, and the two exchange rates, and now we start getting it back. So a much more efficient way to query in certain cases. Okay, the last thing that I want to show um, is partial responses or error handling in, in GraphQL. So as an example, let's say that the score system is down. So what we'll do, we'll just simulate that by saying throw a new runtime exception here. 
and then we'll say that the score system down right so now if we go back here and we just remove all of this to make it simpler so you can see that i got an error it didn't say score system down it said server error and that is because i throw thrown a runtime exception and by default runtime exceptions um, hides the message mostly for security reasons that's configurable um, and then i got the data back that i could so i could find the person but because the score system is down I, I couldn't get that but i could give you partial results and in terms of the error you can um, throw it um, your own exception like this one and um, so rather than a runtime exception we'll throw this and we'll throw it right and now because by default this will actually show the message and again this is configurable so if you don't want to show this message you can con in configuration say that that shouldn't happen okay that was a very quick overview um, so what we've done just to recap is i've shown you how graphql solved over and under fetching by using queries and source fields and batches i've shown multiple requests which you can bundle requests into one um, i've shown how you can use asynchronous to do stuff concurrently and I've shown errors and parcel results. Um, if, if we look at how batch works, if you return a collection, so multiple people, if you don't use batch, it will call for the source field for every person on that result set, where if you batch it, it can do it in one call. For asynchronous, you can not only call multiple queries, concurrently like person and weather but you can also call multiple source fields concurrently like the exchange rates now what didn't i show you what else can we do with graphql i didn't show you how you can also transform data so once the data comes back it can be transformed and you can map it to a different type um, you can do mutations which is when data change, so that is an update or delete or create. Um, and that works exactly like query, you just annotate your method with mutation. You can do subscriptions, which also works exactly the same way, you just annotate with subscription and then you get a stream back. Let's say every time a person gets created, you get a copy of that um, person. Then you can do introspection, which is quite interesting. It's a way to use GraphQL to query the schema, your own schema. And then we also have clients in um, Quarkus and soon in the spec. And they are very similar to the JAXRS client. Um, and it works very similar to that. And the type safe one is very similar to the REST client, the microprofile REST client. Um, we have integration into JSONB, um, into security, into context propagation, into bean validation, into metrics and tracing and generics. So it works well with all other specs, the related specs. And that's it. I think it's now time for questions. Thanks, Philip. Uh, cool. It seems at the moment there are no questions, but let's give a few more minutes to our audience. And okay. meanwhile, I just wanted to thank you for sharing uh, such uh, an awesome information with us. Yeah. Cool. Also, no, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Also, it would be very great if you could have some time to upload the presentation to your abstract in the schedule so that it would be available for other audience. I think that's already there. Oh, okay. Then you're set. Thank you. Cool. I'll also share it here on the chat just uh, for in case.
Okay, and uh, will this presentation be available to access for everyone? I think so. Um, yeah, if you have the link, you can access it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes you might need an access, so I just wanted to make sure. But if you have already, yeah, done, it, it, that's awesome. yeah, it was set to to access, but I've changed it. Okay. Thank you.